Uh, my name is Anthony Toner. I'm a singer, songwriter and musician. And I basically am married to Terra Nova because I'm married to Andrea Montgomery who founded the company. So I've been involved with Terra Nova right from the, 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 you know, the, the 15 years ago, the very first conversations. first production was It's Not All Rain and Potatoes, which was a sketch uh, show written by Andrea, myself and Nula McKeever. And Andrea had also asked me to write some songs for that. So at, at that stage I was in full-time employment, you know, and my music was a kind of a, a part-time thing for me. So I would write these songs and kind of deliver them and write sketches and deliver them, but wasn't in rehearsal or anything like that. But it was huge fun to be part of something like that. Uh, and it stretched me in ways that that I hadn't done before. I mean, Andrea would come to me and say, I need a history of Ireland written to the tune of I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor, and I need it for Friday. So that, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta step, up, step up to the plate. Uh, the next one then was the Ulster Kama Sutra, uh, same again. Uh, I don't think I'd written as much in terms of sketches for that one because that was kind of devised, but I had written uh, some really dodgy songs for that one. I don't think I would air many of those in public now, but again, it was tremendous fun. Uh, and from there, uh, there was a series of plays that were based around uh, pieces of writing by different authors. There was Arrivals 1 and 2 and then me, you, us, them. And for Arrivals 1 and 2, I had written uh, incidental music, I suppose you would call it uh, score music, uh, different textures and different kind of approaches. Um, and I really enjoyed that. It was, it was a stretch for me to come up with an instrumental idea that would fit the mood of a particular piece of writing. And from there on, as the shows became a bit more sophisticated, uh, it needed a different approach than the one I could offer. And, and access to different recording uh, software and things like that that I just didn't have at that stage. So I, that was kind of where my musical involvement with it ended. Uh, but since then, over the course of the last few uh, shows, and particularly the, the big Shakespeare productions, you know, The Tempest and Midsummer Night's Dream, I've been involved in you know, moving furniture and driving people and all of that sort of stuff. And it's just been a joy to be around it through all of that time. Fantastic in those two early shows with the sketches and songs it was fantastic to see something that you'd written get a laugh and get a reaction. Uh, so that that was a first for me uh, in terms of writing writing something that was humorous or supposedly humorous. Um, the, the the one that I go back to, I, I really enjoyed writing the instrumentals for Arrivals one and two, and I think by the time I got to Arrivals two, I was getting a bit better at it and I enjoyed those because it's always been something I've kind of aspired to. You know, while I've always enjoyed being a songwriter, I've also loved, you know, Ry Cooter's instrumental work for movies, and I was, I've always wanted to do that kind of writing. So it was nice to do those, and I think some of those were really good. I haven't listened to them in a long time, but there were a few of them I was really proud of. And at the time, I do remember thinking, oh, that's a direction I'd like to go in, I'd like to do more of that, and I haven't really done it since so it's kind of unfinished business but when I look back on them if I had to pick one out for the desert island it would probably be the pieces that were written for arrivals too it, its relevance from the early days was that it was a chance for audiences to uh, see things on stage that they wouldn't normally see in, in Northern Ireland. To see uh, backgrounds and faiths on stage and beliefs on stage that, that normally they weren't exposed to. But they were also there as part of a really good story or a really good sketch or whatever it happened to be. And that is, is becoming more and more relevant, I think, as we go on. And I think a lot of other people are examining that now. There are a lot of other theatre companies and artists that are looking at those kind of diversity stories and so on but I mean Terra Nova was there long ago doing that it was its kind of reason for living right from the start uh, and I think it's tremendous if I think of the impact that 
that it has had on some of the people who were involved in those big productions, you know, The Tempest and Midsummer Night's Dream. I think of, you know, the, the way it changed their lives in terms of meeting people that they wouldn't normally meet and actually working with them and sharing the stage with them in production. Uh, and also to do to do Shakespeare, you know, to kind of come from the community background and suddenly find yourself with a couple of good lines in A Midsummer Night's Dream. It really is, you know, your life is never quite the same after that, you know. On, on the spot, uh, I think connection. Uh, I was saying some of this earlier that I think that uh, as a company it has connected, uh, first of all it has connected people to each other in terms of the community involvement in the, in the bigger productions. People have found themselves making friendships that have now really lasted, you know, deepened and lasted since then. I think also the connection of people to other backgrounds, you know, people to people of other backgrounds, uh, and a connection to experiences they wouldn't have thought that they'd had. Um, and I think also it connects people to good material. When I think of the Shakespeare, you know, to find a way to find yourself connected to Shakespeare, where you'd thought that that was a citadel that was closed to you for the rest of your life, and then you suddenly find yourself involved in it, that has to be, that has to be an important thing. So there's that. Uh, I think also excellence. Um, Andrea and the entire Terra Nova team have always tried to make it the best that they possibly could with the resources, quite often limited resources that they've had. What's the best possible sound we can get? How can we make this lighting more interesting? Can these costumes be better? Can the experience be better for the audience? So there is a real striving to make it as, as good as it possibly can and I think that, that shines through a lot of it. Um, and I think lastly I would say surprise, I've always, even though I'm there when it's all being written and it's all being discussed with me and all the rest of it, I'm always still surprised when I see it. Uh, I mean even recently when we saw those kind of prototype performances of The Trumpet and the King, it was still a surprise to think that's Henry VIII and this is John, you know, that those those two characters are in the same room saying these things to each other. But all of the shows have come with their own element of surprise, whether it's in the lighting, in the performance, the music, whatever it happens to be. And long may that continue.